The TrekWorks YouTube channel is sponsored by HDA Modelworks, suppliers of scale lighting products, detail accessory parts, and complete model kits. Visit HDAModelworks.com today. Greetings, fellow modelers. Boyd here with you. Well, you'll have to pardon my uh, voice a little bit. I'm a little bit plugged up and battling a little bit of a flu bug here the last couple days. Um, I just wanted to start off here and talk about uh, the beginning of this video series. I've gone back and uh, thought about a lot of the uh, requests that have come in over the years about updating the um, my build technique that I've been using for building these 1350 scale TOS Enterprise kits from Polar Lights. Going back and looking at some of my old videos that I did on these when I did the, uh, uh, you know, multi-part step-by-step build-up on this. Uh, they're getting quite a bit long in the tooth now. They've been out there for four or five years, and um, I've gone and improved quite a bit of the uh, techniques that I've been using to uh, build this model. And so I thought it was time to kind of uh, go back and, and revisit that. As, at a lot, as a lot of you guys know, I don't like to... Uh, do a lot of repetitive things here on the channel and, and go over things that I've already shown. But uh, I get so many requests for this and also on the Enterprise Refit that I thought it might be a good time to come back and do that. Um, you know, there's several things that I've improved as far as being able to build this with uh, what I've learned. And also there's some improved um, products and things that are out there that are available for this kit for as far as the electronics and things like that. So... I thought I would go and do a brand new build up since I'm building these quite frequently anyways. Um, I believe this will be number 46. This one's for my client Tim and uh, he's waiting patiently for his model. So Tim, here you go. You'll get to see your whole model uh, getting built from start to finish here. So these videos will be coming out uh, quite frequently. I'll be, uh, it'll take me about three weeks to finish this, but um, so we'll take you guys through it and Tim can watch along as well. Um, I'll point out here first that we've got the bottom of the saucer. This is the um, 50th anniversary kit, which comes with no more uh, grid lines on the saucer. That seems to be the most popular version of this kit now. Um, I go kind of back and forth on whether I like the grid lines or not. Um, but at this scale, I've talked about this before, the grid lines uh, on, the, on the original 11-foot miniature were uh, done with a mechanical pencil. And uh, so on an 11 foot model, those lines are going to appear, you know, very faint and very small. And that's why most people didn't even believe at first when that information started coming out, you know, back in the 90s, that the model actually did have lines on it. People didn't believe it because they never saw it on the television show. Uh, you know, back in the old days with a low resolution TV, you didn't uh, have a chance to see that. Uh, but they are obviously there. They were done by Matt Jeffries himself at the request of Gene Roddenberry. I don't know at what point they did that. Some of the uh, Enterprise historians might be able to uh, chime in on that here in the comment section. But um, uh, it was done at Gene Rodbury's request. They were constantly adding more detail to the model all the way through the original TV series, adding more weathering. Some of it was due to, you know, trying to make the ship more look more realistic, and some of it was due out of necessity because it was getting damaged with, with handling and, and the harsh lighting they were using. I read some reports and books and things that some of the paint actually blistered because of the lights being too close to the model or the internal lighting of the model overheating when they used it too long. And uh, the set that they were filming on was a really small area out in California and they, did, they didn't have air conditioning. There's some interesting video from back in the day of uh, the model being shot and you can see there's guys walking around with no shirts on. It was so hot in the place. So all kinds of interesting history on that. But getting back to the grid line issue... If you take the scale of this model and shrink it down, you know, to one three fiftieth, um, the lines at mechanical pencil scale would look uh, way too big on the model. So my reasoning is that uh, when I build these models, I don't put the grid lines on. And the main reason being that uh, at uh, this size, they would look just way too big and they would be way too pronounced. Um, I actually have the Master Replicas Enterprise, and it has the grid lines on it. And from across the room, you can see the grid lines on the top of the saucer, which I really don't like that. Um, and, you know, to each their own, I don't like to bash anybody else's ideas as far as what they want to do or what kind of detail 
an individual wants to have on their model but it's just a matter of scale with me where you know you look at um, the thin pencil line on, a, on, on an 11 footer versus this small 1350 scale um, the lines are just going to look way too busy and way too pronounced so I, I uh, don't do the grid lines on this and you know so hopefully that answers a question about that um, that's come up a few times here on the channel so that's my explanation for that but you can see this is the smooth saucer I've gone ahead and started out here let me explain how I start off everything this is the very first part of the model that I start working on and I have this down to a routine now um, uh, where I do everything in exactly the same order on each build and it lets me go through the process you know very efficiently very efficiently and so what I start off with here is I'll basically go in first and I'll take and pull the uh, the parts out of the box and uh, I'm noticing a lot of variance these days in the quality of the molding on this kit um, sometimes they come out really clean and sometimes they come out with a lot of flash in the windows imperfections in the um, in the mold itself where you'll see some uh, you know some dips and some swirls and things like that so the first thing I do is go and inspect all that and make sure everything's good there and if it's not I go ahead and make those corrections so before I put any of the windows in or anything like that I'll go and take my hobby knife and I'll clean up all the flash around these edges take my little micro pin vise and redrill all the little holes where the round windows are located and make sure they're all nice and open and clear the reason you want to do that is even though the glass will probably still fit in there uh, when it comes to masking when you're gonna mask this off to paint it later on if you don't have these all looking nice and clean um, you'll have issues with you know plastic overhanging the edges and things like that and the the windows will look really you know sloppy and and they won't look nice and crisp like they should you know you'll pull your mask and you'll wait a minute why do I have a little edge on here or whatever you know it's not that the paint leaked in there it's actually the uh, the plastic that's overhanging a little bit so you want to make sure that you go ahead and clean all that up first now when you get the upgraded kit um, when they went to the smooth saucer uh, they corrected the little issue here that the original kit had where these were located in the wrong spot they were a little bit too far back and the, the new smooth saucers you know had that issue corrected so you don't have to worry about that um, on the old kit with the grid lines you ha used to have to take a little template and make some new holes here and fill in the old ones but we don't have to worry about that anymore so um, I haven't sanded the outside of this at all yet I'll do that after I get everything done um, with some steel wool I'll use uh, double lot steel wool and just scuff over the whole thing and I'll wipe it down with some um, wax and grease remover which will make sure that it uh, doesn't have any mold residue left over on it so the paint will adhere to it really good but we'll cover that when we get to uh, more of that when we get to the actual painting process but uh, what we've got here now is we've got the basic saucer let's let's imagine that all this stuff isn't in here yet and what we do is we take and coat this with a coat of flat black I like to use flat black because uh, it dries faster than gloss black that's the only reason and I just use the really cheap um, let me grab the can and show it to you um, I buy this at my local Home Depot this is uh, their quick color it's about 99 cents a can you can get this in flat black and also in flat white and so that's the two colors that I use to start off with here and I just go ahead and spray the entire thing down with two coats of uh, flat black and then I'll hold it up you know to my overhead shop lights and look to see that I don't have any light bleed going through that's really important if you're gonna light the model if you guys have out there have done any lighting of models you'll know what I'm talking about you don't want to have any light bleeding through you're gonna be putting really bright lights inside of a really small enclosed area and if anywhere that the paints a little bit thin it'll shine through and you don't want to have that happen um, you know after it's done because if you find it on the outside you're gonna to have to put paint on really thick on the outside to cover it up so um, you don't want to have to do that you want to make sure you get it taken care of here first on the inside and you don't have to do a really pretty job you know you don't have to use high quality paint don't you know don't use expensive paint on the inside here that you know something that nobody's ever gonna see so I'll coat it down with black let it dry really good and then I'll come back with another coat then I'll finally seal it all up with a light dusting of white you don't have to put a really heavy coat of white on just uh, dust over it enough where it kind of you know generally covers everything and what that does is it helps to um, bounce the light around on the inside of this thing so that you know this little small strip of light can actually help generate a little bit of light over here and you know over here and over here it just kind of helps reflect it around a little bit better and makes your lighting 
uh, more efficient and then you don't have to put as much lighting in you notice that we've got very little amount of lighting going on in here we don't have a huge coil of uh, you know LED tape you know inside of this and uh, just these little strips right up against where the window openings are located is going to be plenty for this so we get that stuff finished and the next thing that I'll do is I'll create my basic wiring template is what I like to call it so what I'll do is I'll take some of this wire uh, wrapping wire that I get from Jerry at HDA Model Works. This is 30 gauge. You know, you guys are familiar back in the old video series, I used magnet wire. Well, I don't use it anymore and I haven't used it for some time. I got tired of it because it um, it's just real, um, It's don't get me wrong, it's great, it works fine, but it's real uh, grabby and bindy, if I, if I can use a term like that. Um, it just, it's just hard to work with it. it. You know, it wants to be springy and it it gets hooked on everything and it just drives you crazy and you've got to use uh, some kind of a heat source to strip the wire uh, to get the enamel coating off of it so you can solder to it uh, when, I, when I've uh, you know I noticed a few times when I would actually solder and not take that coating off of there I'd get a cold solder joint where the uh, solder didn't actually penetrate the coating and I had a dead spot and so I got kind of tired of that over time and I started using this instead and um, I can get a you know much bigger roll of this stuff for a lot less money as well and um, it really doesn't matter what colors you use as long as you identify which color is which so what I do in this case with the yellow and the blue I just use the yellow as the uh, positive and the blue as the negative kind of you know like the red versus black the darker color being the negative and that's what I go by so what I'll do is I'll cut off enough wire to make a loop all the way around the circumference here and you'll see that um, what I've done is I've tied all of my individual lights into that and we call that wiring in parallel so that each um, lighting component has its own power source and not uh, you know like a like a chain connected together like you would in a series and I've explained several times on my channel here why I do that um, wiring in series is more efficient as far as if you were running this under battery power uh, you would use less amperage. Now there's mathematical formulas that give you the reasoning behind all that and I won't go into all that. You guys can look that up if you want to. But it's So it's more efficient to wire in series um, as far as making use of your overall power demands. But since I power these models with a power supply and not a battery, I don't worry about that. Um, so uh, instead of efficiency, I'm looking toward reliability. And what I mean by that is, is that should I have one of these components fail over time? It's highly unlikely. These LED strips are really uh, have come a long ways. They're very reliable. These will literally run for hundreds of thousands of hours, and um, you won't have any problems with them. Especially if you you know do a good job with your soldering, and then you run the correct uh, power supply with them, and you won't have to worry about that. But let's say that we did have one of these fail. Uh, just that general area will be the only area that will be affected. If you have this in series. And you get some kind of a short issue or something like that everything that's wired to that beyond that point is also going to get knocked out so let's say i started out wiring this and i had this all in series all the way around this circle here and this one here was the first one that went out well the entire thing would then go dead and that would not be good you know somebody could live with uh maybe one window group going out or something like that you could always say well that's you know an area of the ship that just wasn't lit at that particular time and you could probably get away with it but uh, if the whole thing is dead, well, that's a, a big problem. That means you're going to be cracking the model back at op open to repair it and probably doing a lot of damage. Probably be better off just building a brand new model. So that's my reasoning for that. So you can see what I do here is I start off with a with a circle of uh, wire all the way around. I just cut off two equal strips. It winds up being a little over a foot long, maybe about a foot and a half long, something like that. And it goes all the way around. And I just uh, CA glue down this thing in, in, you know, about every four inches or so. And then I've got my basis for my power hub. I call it a power hub. And I can come off any area I want and connect power to it. So once I get that all in place, I start putting in my individual LED strips here. Get those all glued down. Of course, I solder a, uh, two wires onto each one, making sure I got the polarity correct. And I test light each one of them before I go ahead and glue it in. Make sure it's going to work. And then I tap into each one of these little spots wherever I need to. So I just come off of here and over to the end. I come off of here and tap into it. And basically to do that, I just take my lighter and I um, heat that up a little bit and just take my finger and just pull back the uh, 
the insulation, expose the bare wire, and then wrap my wire around that and solder it. Once I get it all done, I glue it down. Now, um, I'll also point out that on these individual LED strips, they do come with the adhesive backing, but I never trust it. I've seen them where they've sat on top of things, and a day or two later, you go to touch it, and it just kind of falls right off. So, you know, the quality of that varies on these different manufacturers. The ones that have the actual 3M label on the back, they seem to be pretty good because that's, you know, 3M is always a good quality adhesive, but some of the more generic brands don't have that, and so you could have an issue there. So I don't trust it. So what I'll do is after I get it in place there, I'll stick it down with its own adhesive, and then I'll come and, you know, put a drop on the end on each side and a drop in the middle of CA glue just to make sure that that's never going to go anywhere. And I'll, you know, finish the entire circumference here on the saucer and get them all locked down in place. And once they're all tapped in, that you can see, I, you know, each one of them is kind of, you know, tapped in to each section here. Uh, then I'll come back and connect my power supply to the ends here and make sure that the entire thing lights up. And then we're all good to go on that. Now, talking about the center section here, how we light these windows, we're going to cover that in one of the videos upcoming here because I actually use the lighting. I install the lighting in the top of the saucer facing down to light this part here, and I'll explain how I do that when we get to that. I have a really nice and easy way of doing that. So um, one thing that I learned that I'll show you guys here that I'll talk about, um, what I was doing was on the uh, top of the saucer I was... Um, mounting these little sections right here and facing down to light this little group of windows right here that are on the bottom side. And uh, it was always a pain in the butt because I had to, have, had to have an extra set of wires on the top of the saucer and then, you know, make sure that that connected down to the bottom before I closed it all up. So I eliminated that by having this, uh, I just took and mounted these LED strips on their sides. So I pulled off the backing, um, just kind of held them up like that with my hand and ran a bead of CA glue along the edge there. And then hit it with my kicker solution, which is an accelerator that makes it dry really quick. And just glued it so it's, you know, kind of, it's hard to tell here, but they're, they're slightly tilted down, you know, towards this. And they light those really nice. And don't have to worry about that separate wire going up to the top anymore. So that's how I solved that problem. Now, um, then, you know, the next step, obviously, was going ahead and put in all the window glass. Now, on the perimeter here... Um, the window glass in this kit's always been kind of weird. For the glass around the edges here, uh, the top of it sticks up a little bit too high when it's in place, and you have to wind up sanding it down um, so that the saucer will sit down on there nice and flush, you know, the, the lid for the saucer. So I've never used it. I come back at the very end and I use um, regular canopy glue to fill in these with a little pin injector, and I'll show you how I do that when we get to that point. Um, and it also saves me some masking. I don't have to worry about that when I go ahead and paint the saucer. I can just paint right over that and, uh, you know, the, one of the very last steps I do when I'm finishing up the model is go back and fill these in with canopy glue. So we'll cover that when we get to that point. So here in the center, though, I do use this glass and uh, it all fits in there really good. I glue it down with regular model glue and um, they hold really good. We've got this little center part that goes in. There'll be a little white 5 millimeter LED that goes in that to light up the lower planetary sensor. I haven't done that step yet, but um, it's really straightforward. You just put a you know regular five millimeter in there, glue it in place, and bring two wires off of it. And I'll come out, you know, I'll come off of here and use one of these little slots that you see right here, and bring my wire through that and connect it in the same fashion. I'll just bring it over and strip the wire right here and connect it and solder it in place, and the lighting will be provided for that. Um, so I think that's about covered for this. Uh, a couple little little things that I'll point out the um, neck area up here it has this this extra sort of reinforced area right here and this comes up quite a bit taller if you look at your kit now the first few times I built this model for whatever reason I noticed I had a hard time getting that to come together in the middle right there it always had a lot of pressure on it like it wasn't fitting right or whatever so what I've been doing ever since then is I just take my little grinding tool and I grind this down about a quarter of an inch and I grind about a half an inch off of these here and, you know, bring them back down below that. So that you still get that sort of gusset, you know, support right there. But it's not sticking way up and touching, you know, where it actually touches the bottom of the uh, saucer lid. That way I don't have an issue with that anymore. And I've not had the problem with that ever since. Um, just a, you know, kind of a minor modification there. Um, what I've got left to do on this is I've got to install the LED here. 
I've got to install two LEDs here for the impulse engine lighting. Those will be three millimeter amber or orange LEDs. Same basic principle, you just glue them in place facing straight back. The little slots are here for that. Um, we'll show you that before we close this up. But uh, again, I just tap right into my power right here where I've already got it in place. And uh, we've got power for that so that we, uh, you know, once power comes up to the top here, everything powers up at once. And um, that takes care of that. Now, there'll be a control board that I mount in here. I use the Tenet Controls system that you guys, you know, know I use in all these builds. Some people like to put the control boards down into the base. Um, to me, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can do it either way. The only issue that I see with mounting the control board in the base is that you've got to run a lot more wires up through the mounting rod into the model. And I just don't like doing that. That's just a lot of extra work. Um, you know, if a board's going to fail, it's going to fail fairly soon. So what you do is you take your control board and you hook it up, you know, uh, you temporarily hook up some lighting to it and you let it run for a good 24 hours. And if it doesn't fail, chances are it's not ever going to fail. You're not have to gonna, you're not going to have to worry about um, building up a lot of heat inside here. The board's not going to get hot or anything like that. Uh, you're not talking about a lot of amperage or anything, so you don't have to worry about it. And that way everything's sort of self-contained. The other issue is that people say, well, you know, if the board fails, it, it's outside, so I can um, I can repair it, you know, quite easily. Well, that may be the case, but usually when a board goes, it shorts out, and it can take out a lot of other components with it, so it can burn out LEDs and things like that. So even though you replace the board, if it did damage to the inside of the model, anything inside, you know, like some of these lighting components, you're still going to have to take the model apart to fix it. So there's just, you know, it's one of those half a dozen in one and, and, and six in the other. Um, it, it's really the same thing, but to me it's just more efficient and more easy to do by mounting the control board inside. So that's just the way I do it. Um, so with that out of the way, uh, one of the last things I have to do here is I've got to install the LEDs here for the engines. I've got to install the white LED here, and I've got to install my little... Uh, SMD lighting here for the blinking lights for the navigation lights and so I'll explain a little bit what what I do here um, the kit comes with the plastic inserts that go uh, in here to create the lower blinking lights on the bottom of the saucer and they have that little kind of dome on them they're actually supposed to stick out above the surface a little bit and be a little dome there well over time those have always been a pain in the neck to mask um, I've tried liquid mask, I've tried different things, and you always get some kind of residue left over, or you get a little bit of leakage, or whatever, after you paint the whole thing, and you got to go in there, and you got to clean all that up, and it just gets to be a real pain in the neck. And uh, so what I started doing instead is I use this uh, product that I talk about a lot nowadays. I use this on so many different things, I can't even tell you guys, but this is a, a liquid resin called Solar Res. It cures with uh, UV light. And this is what they call their doming type. So it's it's kind of like really thick, like molasses. And um, so what I do here is I take some uh, some regular uh, clear scotch tape. Uh, and I use clear for a reason. And I'll put it over these holes here on the outside. And then I'll come from the backside and I'll pour a little bit of this solar resin here. Just until it comes flush with the hole on the inside there. And then I'll hit it with my UV which cures it up within a matter of seconds. And so I have my basic lens in place there. Now I can come in with my um, 0805 SMDs in white, and I can glue that right down to the top of this facing down so it gives us a nice, clear, bright, light-up effect on that particular area. There's also the little side marker light here that blinks in unison with this light on the side of the saucer. So you get this tiny little hole right here. I believe there's a plastic insert for that as well, but I go ahead and fill that with... Uh, solar res the same way now this stuff dries like really super super hard like you know what resin is right it's it's even harder than like a the resin that you'd see a model kit molded out of or whatever it's it's much harder than that it's like brick hard and so um it'll stand a little bit of sanding or drilling or whatever you need to do and it won't immediately you know crumble or whatever so we've got something nice and solid in there and that stuff bonds really well to plastic so it'll never fall out or anything like that so I fill in these holes the same way. Then I can come in and I can glue my SMD to the back side of that here and here. So it takes two on each side for a total of four that will connect to my um, control board that gets mounted in here. We do the same thing on the top, but we'll get to that when we get to the top of the saucer for the red and the green marker lights that blink. 
but uh, so that's how I do that now you'll see this in here um, at the end of this video when we get to that part um, how I install those and everything so at the very end what I'll have to do then is I've got I've got these where they're basically just not quite flush with the top of the saucer here there's a little bit of gap on each one of these so now all I have to do is take a round mask and put it on that and don't worry about it at all when I do all my painting and priming and everything and after that I can come back and peel that mask off and I've got this little area right here well then I can come back with my solar res and I just basically hold on here like this and really carefully it took a little bit of practice to figure it out I did it on you know a couple pieces of paper first to learn the technique the the trick to it is you've got to get it down in here right on it and you've got to just let it kind of ooze out of there you don't want to push out push it out or anything like that and then just sort of, you know, kind of as it's doing that, you just kind of lift up a little bit until you see just a little stream kind of coming off. And then you let go of it. And that little stream will just kind of settle down on there and, and, and fill itself in. And it'll make a really nice, perfect little dome right above the surface. And as soon as you see that dome formed, you come back and just hit it with the uh, UV light. And it'll, you know, it'll dry it instantly. And you'll have a, you know, a dome on there that looks exactly like the, um, the plastic part that was on there to begin with. And, uh, you know, if you would have used the plastic insert. And now you don't have to worry about any kind of masking or anything because you did that at the very end after all the paint and everything is all done. And it comes out much cleaner and, and much more uh, perfect that way. And again, it's just another one of those little things. Now, if you happen to um, have any problems with your window glass, if you break part of it off or lose part of it or anything like that, you can also use this solar res to go in and do any of these windows. In fact, you could do all the windows with this instead of the plastic if you wanted to. I actually think it might look a little bit better, but um, this stuff is pretty expensive, so I use it kind of sparingly. But, um, so, you know, there, there's a million uses for this stuff, and I'm discovering more and more every day when I work with it. So what I figured out is, is that you, um, the scotch tape allows the, uh, the UV light to penetrate here, so you get, you'll, you'll get a complete cure of the, uh, the resin on both sides. When I was using the uh, painter's masking tape, the blue stuff um, it would only penetrate on one side and sometimes when I would peel it off it would leave a little sticky residue and I had to come back and you know hit it again and dry it so just another little thing that I figured out over time so we have that all worked out um, the dome as I said will be built up when you when you kind of practice that technique a little bit and you can use that in a lot of things if you need to have running lights or things on your models you can work with it and figure out how to use it but um, so that's uh the basic first steps here of how I, you know, kind of get the lower half of the saucer prepared. Uh, I, I basically come in and do the same thing on the top of the saucer, and we'll show you what we're going to do with that here coming up. And then uh, in the next video, we're going to move on to the uh, the secondary hull and how I prep that and get the initial lighting and everything and wiring installed in that. So um, what I'm going to do here is take a quick break, and I'll come back, and I'm going to install my uh, my uh, SMDs and my uh, my 5 millimeter white LED here in the center. And we'll show you how we've got all that done and how that looks. Be right back with that. All right, everybody, I'm back over to the other bench now where I can connect everything up to my power supply and test it all out. But what I've done here is I've gone ahead and installed the 5 millimeter white LED here in the center to light up the uh, lower planetary sensor dome. I'm using a 470 ohm 1 quarter watt resistor, which was standard for a, a 9 volt DC setup. I've got my two white 0805 SMDs on each side here, which makes four in total to light up the bottom blinker and the side blinker on the saucer. I want to point out that when you glue these SMDs in place for the side light on the saucer, you want to make sure you stay below the little lip here. Um, that's important because when you go to put the saucer down, you don't want to put any pressure on that SMD. You could either crush it or, you know, knock one of the wires off or actually knock it out of place or something. So pay a little extra attention to that what I've done is I've also installed the two three millimeter uh, orange standard LEDs here at the back for the impulse engines again uh, 470 ohm one quarter watt resistor on those that's a standard resistor by the way that I use on about 99 percent of everything that I do because I run basically all my models that'll be good from anywhere from 9 to 12 volts DC so you should be fine with just about any kind of an LED and that type of a resistor so then uh, after I got everything connected and soldered together, I went ahead and um, tested it to make sure it was all going to light. And then once I was sure of that, I went ahead and glued everything down, um, tacked everything down on here so none of my wiring can move. 
none of the connections you know can get together and short out or anything like that that's really important that you do that for the long term um, you know the model will be stable you won't have any wiring problems under the long term and then you really don't have to use any kind of shrink wrap or covering on any of this because you don't have to worry about that so it saves a little bit on that too but uh, everything is ready to go so let's go ahead and power it up I'm running it at 9 volts and you can see everything's working just fine our blinkers here aren't working yet because in the next video part 2 will come back and we'll install our um, tenant controls control board right in this area right here and we'll connect up all these SMDs and then finally we're going to work on the top part of the saucer we got a couple more SMDs in red and green to put in there for the upper navigation lights and then we're going to install some more strip lighting and I'll show you how I light up the BC deck and the bridge and also at the same time light up this center section of the windows on the bottom of the saucer so uh, we're looking good guys after we get all that completed we'll be able to seal the saucer up what I like to do is get this saucer completely uh, you know assembled all the putty work and everything done which is another thing I'm doing different than I did on some of the older videos where you saw me sanding on that seam once I already had it installed on the model it's a lot easier to um, go ahead and do all this work now we'll want to make sure we go ahead and uh, I'll turn the lights off so they're not glaring for you but we're gonna take uh, our hobby knife and go around and scrape all the way around this whole area here to get all this paint and primer off so we get a really nice good glue bond on that that's another really important step and uh, so we'll have the saucer probably by the end of uh, the next video we'll have the saucer all ready to be closed up and sealed and then we can do our putty work and and uh, get the saucer all prepped and ready to be painted I'll go ahead and paint the whole entire thing and get it all decaled up like it's one separate uh, item and then all I have to do when I get the secondary help put together is just drop the saucer down on top and pull the wires through the neck and we're all set so but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it I hope you guys will enjoy this series it's kind of fun to uh, go back and update all this and uh, thanks for checking it out we'll catch you really soon on the next video this thing will probably last a couple of weeks until we get this model completely done uh, and we'll show you what we're going to be doing with the rest of the whole entire build so hope you'll check it out and follow along we'll see you next time everybody take care and happy modeling everyone